Okay, this is Jim Wilson. We're at the W2JR control room. We're going to talk about the Nexus. And the Nexus is a video server that puts the programming over the air. And uh, here's the Nexus. Here's the external hard drive. Here's the external router. Here's some TBCs we use to do frame sync. Here's your audio. What we got here is audio levels going in and audio levels going out. This is a 360 video server that we use in conjunction with the Nexus distribution amplifier. Then we've got ingest decks. Got routing over here for ingest and monitor preview. Got our audio stuff over here, volume control, monitoring. And here's a computer dedicated to Nexus. Emergency alert. There's the Nexus computer again. Transmitter control. Right now it's online. It also auto dials. Uh, here's a computer we download from CTN and do office work, email, logs, so on and so forth. Then we got the monitor wall over there. Satellites and TBCs for the satellites that we use direct to air. Got some old three quarter inch machines and we got preview monitors. Emergency alert radios. Uh, we got several audio meters. Then we got our system clock, which is actually an old computer. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Saved about a thousand bucks there. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to talk about hooking up this external router. Now, as you can see, the Nexus is hooked to the external hard drive and the external router. The external hard drive is where all the shows are stored. The external router is where the switching is taking place. And then we use this cheapo, well this one this one's a normal, but this bottom one's a, a cheapo passive switcher to preview the various channels of the Nexus and to preview the various channels of 360. Down here is a 16 by 16 router that's kind of switching stuff behind the scenes, kind of like the matrix of the control room. We have the old automation system still online got a KVM switch here so we can switch this monitor that's what we call the info channel it's like a PowerPoint computer running all the time it's kind of like emergency backup just an old computer uh, this here is what we call the Nexus computer oh no not this isn't the Nexus sorry this is the Maco computer let me show you that this is the old Maco automation system that we still pass through as a backup. In other words, this really ain't doing anything, but if the Nexus were to go down, down, we could program this. And this is what's kind of replaced the Nexus. And then if we go to, well here, that's the time computer. We go, I'm sorry, we go back to the Nexus computer. Now the interesting thing here, when you hook up the external router, and I don't know if you can see this, you'll notice you can get control, you could have up to eight channels out. That isn't in the regular log. And then also when you take manual control, let's go there. Um, you have, say you have, you have various levels that are, aren't normally showing up because remember now you have eight outputs that you can control. Well, here's the eight inputs because we've got the simple Kramer we wanted to match. We've got satellite one. That there is the 360 video server. Satellite three, CBN, satel or that's the 360 video server we're running an external server and then we have two satellites here now and it has two uh, MPEG channels but really only one of them 
and I don't know if you can see that. Only one of them is used over the air. We switch SAT5 to CTN here. We switch between it back and forth. So the others we record from, that's why they're showing up there. Because that switcher is also the recording sources. Let's take a quick look behind the scenes. And I know this video is getting a little long, but we'll try our best here to not knock uh, coffee cups over and so on and so forth. Okay, now here's the Nexus. Let me see if I can get this. <laughs> Here's the 8x8 router. As you see, it's got all RCA and BNC. And here's the Nexus. Um, should have cleaned some of this wiring up. Anyways, the router is hooked with this null modem, a serial cable, to the Nexus right there. That's what controls the router. Then you'll notice on the Nexus itself only one of the inputs is being used. That's one of the outputs. Now only one of the audio inputs is being used but you'll see there are multiple hooked up and some of those are left over from when I did the switch over and all the outputs are being used. One goes over the air to a TBC and two go to that preview switcher over there and of course we go to the distribution amplifiers because we want multiple outputs now a lot of you don't have another uh, another video server like this one the 360 but what we're doing here with the 360 is we're stacking playlists and the Nexus can send uh, the play command. Like here, there's two channels. There's the spot list. So whenever the Nexus sends a GPO pulse, it hits play, plays that and holds, and then it switches to it. And you can do that. You can control external GPO devices. That was the spot channel. Here's the show channel. So in our case, we're using a mixture from the Nexus is controlling everything but we're using time shifted shows time shifted from satellites to construct the main log and then we're ingesting local shows and spots from DVDs and tapes into here and then this unit sends a GPO and a switch command to this unit and then this unit's on the air, and then it goes back. Now, I know most of you aren't probably going to be doing that, but I just wanted to show you that that's possible also. And that there is an external, and here's the 360. Nice little box, except that it wraps the video files in MXF, which means you can't use them in the Nexus. Isn't that nice? No, it isn't nice. Um, so what we got going here is on the USB hopefully you can see this there's the network and then below that the USB goes to this external box then I like using these uh, terminal blocks for telephone terminal blocks these breakout panels uh, I take that connector here break it out and then I've got the door closed for the 360 but uh, then I come out with the wiring into the 360 so that thing ticks away all day long works real nice then the switcher an 8x8 uh, automatically switches you can take manual control but we don't I put those little bumpers there to prevent it from accidentally being switched here's color correction in this case for the, vi the other video servers got two channels and then the Nexus has got one channel of playback. Remember no switching is going on in the Nexus anymore. We can control and distribute the audio over here. 
These are cheap. Go to Musician's Friend or somewhere. I like having one of these per channel. So this rack mount here, I think it was only like a hundred bucks. Whereas this distribution amplifier down here, which is a lot, a lot better, I think it's like 350. Then here's a real nice one for level control. Real cheap. Look at these are all independent, and they have an audio meter. Isn't that nice? So you're getting two things in one: the level control and the audio meter, so you can adjust your level. And I wanted to show you. Uh, we got the CTN satellites, one primary, one backup. Then we've got other satellites. We use the PanSat ingest deck here for production. We got audio meters. These are cheap. Market Tech. Here's one. Again, yeah, 100 bucks. Calibrate them. <laughs> As you can tell, I like getting things for cheap. I try not to spend much money. Uh, here's the TBC for the info channel. And here's the old one. This, this one here is for color correction synchronization on CTN SAT5 for us. Now, the other satellites I don't have synchronized. Why? Because I don't switch to them directly. The only things we need synchronized is the ones you switch to directly or the ones you have audio video color problems with. So on those satellites I can run them right into the Nexus matrix unsynced because I never switch to them directly. As long as the video level and the audio level are good and they are because I got uh, you see this, these distribution amplifiers. Now a lot, almost a lot of what you're seeing is from eBay for very cheap, very cheap on eBay. <laughs> One tenth the price you would pay for this stuff new. Here's another Grass Valley distribution amplifier. And it's got cards in there, they're 10 by 1. Oh wait, here's the sync color black generator. Goes to a distribution amplifier. These are 1 by 10, I think, on the back. And then I take that sync out. Anyways, the distribution amplifier will get, let you set the video level also. So you can get all your video levels matched. And we like the Magni. There, where is it? MM400. And there's the screen for it there. to get match your video levels and then once we calibrate we calibrate the audio levels those are over the air these meters over here are for preview now mainly all these switching here and these are left over from the old days and donations but anyways are for preview and routing for ingest and on that 16 by 16 some of those are going to the monitor wall and yes, I know we could go to flat panels with quad splitters, but there again, it's working. I'd rather spend the money on something else right now. More computers, in my opinion, but I'd like to replace this 360 with a nonlinear editor uh, ingest workstation with its own one terabyte hard drives and then just FTP over here. Kind of like the Nexus peg, peg unit, but you could build your own. So, anyways, that's what I'm waiting to do because this 360 is getting long in the tooth. Plus these files, I can't get out. I can't convert them. I don't know if you understand that, but when you ingest stuff into 360, it's on a one-way trip never to return. So, only to be played in a 360. So, hopefully this will help you understand what's happening a little with these units and read the posts on the internet and pictures and I will try to post also the schematic drawing and here I am again so God bless you all remember at WTJR we are working till Jesus returns amen <laughs>